Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's our Christmas Day special. And right now it's time for Other Press, where we'll be reviewing what the national dailies are saying this morning. Joining us to review the papers this morning is Professor Camilo Sanifage from the Department of Political Science, Barriero University, Kanu. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. We hope Merry that you're Christmas celebrating you. well. I mean, I know well, you're Muslim, but yes. We are celebrating it in a hard uh, crash. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, that's our first uh, headline for today. Yeah. Unusual uh, Yuletide as cash crunch, unaffordable prices, ma celebration. Mm. So that's where we are right now. And that's the story on The Guardian and possibly every other newspaper that there is cash crunch. Well, that's no longer news. It doesn't even need a comment anymore. We know that this is what is happening. Um, it's not working properly. I, I think this is a double jeopardy. Uh, you go to the bank, uh, you get to the bank, there is no cash there. Right. And those of us who are working under the federal government uh, have not received their salary. So... Mm. Most of our Christian brothers um, will be celebrating the uh, Christmas, or are they are celebrating the Christmas under this hard condition. And the sad fact is that um, uh, commodities are so expensive, right. which is um, quite the reverse. Usually when there is Christmas or any festivity, uh, uh, people tend to cut uh, prices, but nowadays uh, it's the opposite. So I think that is why I said uh, this Christmas is going to be a hard one uh, for our Christian brothers uh, because of the financial situation we are in now. Yeah, we just discussed, you know, if, even if it's the Christians that are, are celebrating, it, it, it affects everybody. everybody. Because in the Salah, for instance, my Muslim friends will give me ram. So <laughs> when it comes to Salah and they cannot buy Ram, me to I will not eat Ram. <laughs> so, but you know, there are little things that put smiles on the people's faces and help for bonding. And if these things are absent, this bonding, this sharing of love will be very difficult. Uh, so everybody is suffering it, even whether you're a Christian, whether mm. you're a Muslim or And Hindu. aside to that, because even as a, uh, as a Muslim, you're still going to eat. So you're yeah. still going to go to the market yes. and still buy these commodities mm. for the exorbitant prices that they mm -hmm. are now. So it's, it's really a terrible yes, thing. What, I, what I'm saying is they, 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 yeah, it affects everybody. Yes. Right. But you know, Christians are the ones who are giving, giving gifts and others. Yes, so, yes. Okay. Uh, so that is why, you know, beside the, the, the expense of it, uh, I think their spirit will be dumped yeah. uh, because uh, they do not, they, they will not have the means. Yes. You know, it's, uh, Christmas is a period of uh, gift giving. Yes. And if somebody doesn't have that one, uh, maybe he may be patient enough, but he will not be happy that uh, the usual scene of giving gifts and, you know, a merry exchanging of gifts uh, will not be possible. So I think that is why I say our uh, Christian brothers will feel it the more. Mm. But as far as expensive is concerned, I think yeah, everybody. everybody is affected. Mm. Yeah. Anyways, let's move over to another small headline here on The Guardian. It says, Tinubu seeks support, promises more interventions to ease hardship. So obviously, we've, we've talked about how difficult the times are right now because people cannot afford um, the basic amenities. People cannot afford food. People cannot afford to celebrate Christmas the way they would love to because of the cash crunch. But now, the president is promising us intervention to ease the hardship. Do you believe that? You see, given what happened in the past uh, six months or so, uh, or seven months from the inauguration date to date, uh, we have seen so many and had so many promises. And uh, unfortunately, none of them has materialized. So I think uh, our Nigerians are now becoming used to uh, political promises and seeing nothing on the ground. So I'm a little bit pessimistic. I'm hopeful that uh, the president will fulfill uh, his promise. Yes. 
but at least uh, for now i am uh, pessimistic that it will happen given the number of promises that have not been fulfilled so far okay so i was just speaking to yamgo before you came on and we we're talking about the fact that um, um potakot refinery is about to start um, producing we have dangote refinery about to start producing as well so we're like okay possible it, it's very possible that the fuel prices might come down we're just being hopeful and, <laughs> and optimistic um and it's possible because fuel is like a ripple effect to everything so it's possible that things will start to ease for everyone so could it be that next year is looking up for everyone especially with the fact that the cash crunch is really um dampening our moods right now but can we be hopeful for next year even though the president is saying this but looking at all of the other things that seem to come for next year is it something that we can be hopeful that it will be a better year for everyone compared to 2023 i think we should be hopeful but uh to me i'm already pessimistic so i am hopefully uh, pessimistic um <laughs> the reason is that the, the two refineries that you mentioned uh potakot and dangote uh, even if they uh, function or they start operating uh given what happened in the past i don't think they they will bring down the price after all uh our oil has been marked with a dollar and the dollar kept on rising and if we also look back at what happened like when them uh, goes into went into cement uh, production it, it never come down so you know business people are there to make profit and after all uh, since the naira is very weak okay and uh, there will be for counting things in dollars. So I think unless we address that issue of the weakness of the Naira, that is when we will be very hopeful that uh, the, the market, if the two uh, things start to uh, operate, that we are going to see uh, the price coming down. But like I said, because we are counting things in dollars, so when dollar kept on rising, I, I don't think there will be any positive change or drastic change let's let's put it this way there could be minor changes uh, downward but it is not going to be that uh, uh strong enough or effective enough to affect the moment and besides you know uh, the world bank has started talking you remember last week also when their representative here was saying that uh, we should raise it to 750 and uh, you know our leaders tend to listen to them more than the Nigerians. So that's why I'm a little bit pessimistic about, uh, you know, things coming down in the new year, but I'm hopeful that it will come down. I always fear when Dangote is involved in any business because he seems to swallow his competitors all the time. Mm -hmm. And he has uh, some special um, uh, concessions, some special privileges that yeah. every other one, uh, one doesn't have. So if he enters a business, be sure that every other person will be swallowed. So I don't he know. He has like that monopoly. Effect. Yeah, yes. He, he likes monopoly. Uh, monopoly. So I, I don't know if that will give us a positive change in the oil industry or not. Well, I'm just saying I'm not the analyzer. But mm -hmm. there is this story uh, still on The Guardian there. Uh, a, an individual uh, of Badoku tax Tinubu to restore constitutional governance. We are entering into a new year. Do you think uh, this admonition can be carried through from the body language and the actions of the present administration? Do you think that by the end of this administration in four years' time, uh, constitutional governance will be restored in Nigeria? You see, it is uh, a pet company. Uh, it's either we restore it or uh, the system collapse. So I think it is even in the interest of the leaders and interests of Nigerians that we restore constitutional governance. Because uh, democracy is about uh, constitutional governance. So I think uh, the leaders are better off to uh, take heed of this uh, admonishment and, uh, and try to uh, take a step to do it. Otherwise, I think uh, I, 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 things will not go well for us. The fear, so that the fear is that, well, the fear is that, the fear is that these same people who we are hoping will be the ones to restore constitutional governance are the ones that 
uh, are benefiting from the spoils of non-constitutional governance as it is. Uh, when I tried to voice this thing out and somebody just asked me, do you think the government that went to another state to dictate to that state what to do, like the case of River State, is something, something that, or a government that will try to restore constitutional governance? Because if they do that, it will not benefit them the way they are benefiting from the system right now. So do you think uh, that person might be right, that this government may not ha be thinking about restoring constitutional governance because it, they will not see the gains? Yeah, I think he's, he's right because uh, politicians uh, tend to have short sight. You know, it's a myopic approach that uh, you are benefiting from uh, the crisis, but nobody is looking at the consequence of doing that. So unless they look at uh, the, the side effect of it and the long-term effect, uh, one would be pessimistic that they will not do it. But I think um, they, they may see the handwriting on the wall that it is high time for them to do it. This uh, issue of... Uh, uh, abusing the constitution, you know, misusing it rather, using the rules for personal gain, I think uh, is a dangerous thing. And I believe eventually our leaders will look at it because they will see that they have only one option either to continue with it and then destroy the system or at least try to take steps to arrest the situation so that they can ensure the continuity of the system and the continuity of their benefiting from the system. Mm. Okay, let's move over to the next paper. And for this one, we have The Nation. Um, well, there are some major headlines there, which is talking about President Tinubu assuring Nigerians of a new dawn and progress. But let's look at Emi Feli now, which, which is the former CBN governor. Emi Feli Mustafa TGI tackle CBN investigator. Now, as we all know, um, the report came that Godwin Emefele had opened 593 accounts, um, offshore accounts that we don't know about. And then um, he has come to tackle the investigator saying that those account, those reports are false. He did not open this account. And if they were opened, it's without the knowledge, his knowledge. And he also said that the redesign of the Naira was approved by the former president, Buhari. Um, so what is your take on all of this, on Emefele's saga? I think I'll put it that way. Yeah. Daily Trust puts it very yeah. succinctly. Yeah. Emefele yeah. sues, <laughs> sues the investigator. Yeah. yeah. Go on, sir. Yeah. I, I think he's taking the fight back uh, because he's not only denying that things have happened and uh, uh, from other report from other papers that uh, he's suing the yeah. uh, investigator. So I think um, we are going to see, uh, you know, the fight to continue because um, as he drags uh, on and uh, the other side drag it on, so we are going to see a lot of it. But um, I believe that uh, whatever it is, uh, the damage has been done. Uh, because it's a serious indictment to uh, the former uh, civilian governor and even the nation. Because we, we, should, we should see it beyond himself. Because this is denting the, or has already dented the image of Nigeria, uh, this issue of corruption. So I think uh, we are going to see more of it uh, in the new year. And uh, that is not the end of it. Because people are not becoming, you know, disappointed with what is going on. AI in particular, I almost resolved that I will no longer read news about corruption because it is virtually the second thing in our headline, either corruption mm -hmm. or conflict somewhere. So mm -hmm. there is nothing positive that people will look at, accept uh, uh, this issue of corruption here and there. So I believe that, uh, like I said, we are, we, are, we are not seeing the end of it uh, with the uh, a end of this new year. I mean, this year, in fact, we should brace up for more to come in the new year that is coming in a week's time. Okay, well, you said you, you almost resolved not to read <laughs> conflicts and corruption and all that. Maybe <clears throat> the newspaper proprietors uh, heard your prayer and they want to make it easy for you to make that decision because here on the Daily Trust it is that newspaper proprietors 
uh, to adjust cover prices January <laughs> 2. Mm. From January 2, they are going to adjust their prices. So maybe it will go up and up and up, and then people will just maybe not decide not to read it. anymore. Well, I don't know. They check the internet. Yes. But down there... Well, we, yeah. take it, we take it on the internet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, maybe we will be watching press reviews on the TVs and other things so that at least we keep abreast with what is going on. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you afford the, the diesel or petrol to light your generator because there's no public power? Mm -hmm. uh, that's another thing that we'll be considering. But down here, Christmas expects prosperity soon. Tilibu tells Nigerians, we've talked about that. But there's a small thing, the writer there, that says National Assembly leaders and governors preach peace and sacrifice. The National <laughs> Assembly leaders are preaching peace and sacrifice. The governors mm. are also preaching peace and sacrifice. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, the people should sacrifice. Let me hear your comments there. Yeah, you see, it is good to preach something, but you have to lead by example. Exactly. You know, the, the, the leaders are preaching this uh, peace and sacrifice, and they are not doing that. Uh, look at what happened with the, the budget. Uh, how much do they plan for themselves? Uh, at a time when the people are, you know, feeling the crunch, they are neck deep into uh, economic uh, crisis, and yet, they are more concerned, the leaders are more concerned with their own personal uh, benefit out of it. Remember also what happened during COVID, when everybody was shut down, then people were, you know, the leaders, the same leaders were just concerned with what they would get out of the system. So I think if they want people to sacrifice, uh, to be peaceful, they have to lead by example. Calling people to do it will not amount to anything. In fact, it will uh, wear, uh, water down the whole thing and it will make uh, people more adamant because they are not seeing it uh, on the part of their leaders. So I think it is better for the leaders to not only call but also to back their call by action, by leading, by example. Okay. Um, all right. Let's look at nature news right now. And the major headline here says, ahead of 2025 deadline, Nigeria records 170 local government, 117 local government areas as open defecation free. Um, is this what we should be celebrating at this point? <laughs> I don't even know how to structure my question on this. But please, what are your thoughts on this open defecation free um, 117 local government areas for 2025? Do you think the statistics are right mm. in the first place? 117 local governments <laughs> defecation free in Nigeria? In the past in the first place, I think this is not uh, likely to be right because that's what they call how to lie with statistics. So we are, uh, here we are, people are dashing this because we know we don't have a record on this issue. Now let's assume for the sake of argument that uh, it is right. We are talking of 117 out of 774. Mm -hmm. So you see, this is not up to 15% also. So we cannot celebrate uh, Pedua. I think we should see it the other way around. What happened to almost uh, 600 and something local government? So which means there is uh, that open deprecation in, in, in these areas. So I think this is nothing we should celebrate about it. And maybe it is only uh, 717 that is reported that is yet to reach the target, then that is when we celebrate. But when you are celebrating less than 15%, I think uh, uh, that this is a major problem. So to me, I think that the whole headline is not something that we should celebrate on two grounds. One, because the statistics is, uh, may not be wrong, may not be true. And second, even if it is true, it's so insignificant that we can celebrate it. All right. I think it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but I always think like that. I think it's wrong. Mm. Because um, they give uh, local governments, no local government is o ODF as open defecation free in Benway, Plateau, Kogi, Kwara states. That means every other one has local governments that are ODF, mm. and which means it includes Lagos, yes. which I know is, is not true. Uh, it because includes, we were having that conversation yes. about um, somewhere uh, yeah. on the mainland. Yes, yeah. it's not true. It's you cross river. 
where I come from. It's not true. It, it, they're de declaring some local governments open defecation free. So I, I, I think if they even have to do this, you need to sensitize people first. Mm -hmm. You need to let them know that this is wrong. It's barbaric. You can't be doing this on the streets. Um, so it, you need to give them the reason why, not just declaring that it's open defecation free. Why should it be? And that's the way you can achieve that. You don't even have um, public toilets yes. that people can use because if you had that and it is free and it is clean, mm -hmm. people will use it. But but even in Lagos here that we use, we have them. You go to a place like Odudu Bega, for instance. There are Tarry. there are toilets there are toilets there that are supposed to be used by people. You go there, you pay through the nose. Mm -hmm. You buy tissue from them. You pay the money that you're going to use you the buy place. Water. You buy yeah. water uh, to use you know, in that place. So it makes you what is it? Let me go to how do they call it? Uh, the short airport put. and short put, <laughs> and that's what they do. And we are not asking the right questions in the first place. Yeah, but. We do hope that we'll get and, to that. And, 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 the, and the most worrisome thing is that we are lying to ourselves. Mm. Yeah. Okay. By the, the, so, uh, and, uh, you know, that is the most stupid thing that somebody can do to lie to himself. We are lying to ourselves that this is what is happening while we know it is not. So I think uh, um, uh, this is a very bad thing. Possibly, there's funding coming from international bodies, so mm -hmm. you have to show working, you have to show statistics and say that this is what we have achieved, so that the funding will still come. Yeah. And that's how some people with broken legs or headache or maybe a rash somewhere mm -hmm. were recorded as having COVID, so that we'll have a large number and then the international community will say, but I doubt till this day, and there are a lot of people who do as well, that we had that kind of number of people that came down with COVID in Nigeria. Mm. A lot of people don't believe it because I've seen situations where things that are not related to COVID were recorded as COVID. That's COVID. In fact, if yeah, you just have malaria, the, it's recorded as COVID. <laughs> yes, sir. The, the international communities have representative here and they are eyewitness, living witness to it. So eventually, when we keep on telling the lies, nobody will believe us. So mm. that is why I say it is a bad thing. We let to ourselves and we expect others to know. They, I mean, to accept it, but uh, they are living witness. There is, I, I don't know there is any local government, whether rural or urban, that you can go uh, and you wouldn't see this problem. So I think it's better we become serious with ourselves and uh, face the reality and face it squarely. We shouldn't be playing things just to attract uh, you know, aid from uh, I call foreign donors. We should stand firm to try to see them. We write to buy things by ourselves and we stand on our feet. Mm. Okay, um, so it's still in Nature News. Let's take one more here. And it says Federal College of Agriculture appeals for federal government intervention against land encroachment. Um, so obviously we need farmers, we need them to be able to provide food for the nation. And the federal government and federal college of agriculture is appealing to the federal government on intervention against land encroachment. We've heard of banditry, we've heard of people claiming lands encroaching. Um, what do you think about all of this and how the government can actually help? You see, the, uh, we will be back to the issue of this Ruga politics. So I think it's because we have um, over politicized the issue, that is why we are having problems with it. Actually, uh, land encroachment is a very, very serious uh, problem. It is a major source of the conflict that will be uh, in so many parts of the country. So I think the government needs to do something uh, about that. And our politicians also should uh, desist from over politicizing this issue. And they should know that uh, this has a serious uh, effect in terms of uh, food security, in terms of, uh, you know, even social security, you know, human security, because it is a source of uh, conflict, uh, like I said. So the, the leaders uh, should try to see what happened. And the irony of it is that uh, if you go back in history, even the colonialists were able to do something about it. And here we are managing ourselves. Instead of looking at the problem squarely and objectively, we uh, seem to over politicize it and uh, we are now having a problem with, uh, with it. So I think the government needs to come to that one uh, and uh, the politicians and the leaders have to, like I said, 
take it as a serious challenge instead of uh, personal gain. Uh, and uh, you know where we have this problem of the Ruga and other things. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're winding down now, but we have two um, headlines from the Punch newspaper. Uh, before we take the, um, the, uh, the biggest headline here, let's look at what Shoinka says. I will assess Tinubu's government after one year. That's according to Ole Shoinka, the Nobel laureate, um, asking the question, uh, is it too early to assess a, a government? Because my people say a dog that will be a hunting dog, you will know it from when it is a puppy. So is it too early to assess the government and make it sit on, on its toes or, or, or do the needful? Or we should, should we leave it till one year, according to Shoyinka? Because this, that, he has a voice that is stronger than maybe a thousand people right. that are ordinary. And if he fails to say something until one year, what do you think? I think his words are more than the millions of people because of his... Uh, Cloud and uh, position, but I think uh, it's better we start assessing. Here I will disagree with you. We should. It's better we start assessing. Uh, you know, right from the early stages. After all, if he said he's going to wait until one year, one year from what? We are seven months into it, so it's barely five months. Right. So if you want to make the assessment, you start as early as possible, so that you can put uh, the leaders on their top. It is not after the damage has been done that you can come out and say you have done this assessment. I mentioned it earlier that in the past seven months we have seen so many promises by the government, at least in terms of those ones that have been uh, said that have not been fulfilled. So I think we can hold that. And after all, that is what democracy is about. A democracy is about the accountability of the leaders to the uh, late. Mm. So I think um, it is not too early. Uh, we should start it uh, waiting until next year. I mean, one year, I think it will be a little bit too late to do to start to wait for such long. Mm. Well, we hope that people are already doing the assessments <laughs> right now so we can know where we are yeah. and um, the, the government can actually be on the toes and know that they need to alleviate the sufferings of Nigeria. They don't want to know what my assessment is. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just leave it. They don't want to know what mine is either. <laughs> um, let's take another, well, the major headline here on The Punch and it's screaming out loud. It says... 187 billion Naira fraud. EFCC arrests humanitarian ministries contractor, probes four Buhari ministers. And the writers here are ex humanitarian affairs minister Umar Farouk, ex DGs, face arrest over 37 billion Naira money laundry allegation. And then the anti graft agency grills out contractors over funds transfers probe three other Buhari ministers over 150 billion naira. That is, oh, I don't know what to say, but please, I want to know what your <laughs> thoughts are. I'm sure people are happy saying, okay, we need to find out more. We need to probe these people and ensure that if you're stealing money, you must dance to the music. You must face the consequences. But please, what are your thoughts on all of this with EFCC arresting um, the humanitarian ministries contractors and probing other um, for others of Buhari ministers. You see, when I said I'm getting paid up and tired of this issue of corruption, uh, the point is that you hear it all over, from this ministry to this agency, mm. and it is no longer in millions. We are talking of billions of naira. And uh, the irony of it is that uh, these things, the EFC and other things will take their position, and eventually nothing is going to be done on, on the exercise. After all, uh, with all these things, eventually there will be believe again and things will be settled. So that is why people are becoming pessimistic about uh, this issue of pro, uh, this issue of corruption, because we hear it and uh, you know our hopes will be raised that, look, something is going to be done on the issue, and yet, uh, after a long time, uh, then, then nothing will come out of it. So that is, uh, to me, uh, why people are becoming disenchanted with it, and I in particular am becoming disenchanted with it, because, um, yes, it is right we investigate, but investigation is not enough. 
uh, things have to be done. After all, how many cases? Had it been, had been trying the uh, uh, cases? I think at least we'll be making headway in it. Uh, after all, with all this news uh, about corruption here and there, it seems to be, uh, you know, in, on the increase, uh, like I said, uh, now it is in billions. In the past, it was uh, maybe thousands, then we reached two uh, millions. Now we are talking of billions, and so even in trillions. So I think uh, it, it is a bad thing for us that uh, we keep on hearing about it and we don't see a result of what happened eventually. Do you also believe that uh, the ex-president should be invited? Because all these people being arrested said uh, or a, a lot of these things are connected to him as the, uh, the chief, uh, the, the commander-in-chief as it's it is. It's funny that yes. Buhari came here to fight corruption and then we're hearing all these, people all these things yeah. happening under his administration. So if you come here to fight corruption, how come corruption still thrives? under your administration? I think that is a big question. And then they are inviting all his ministers and all that, especially like the, the federal government, um, the, the, the CDN governor, mm -hmm. who said he signed it, he approved uh, Naira redesign, redesign and so many other things. And then he's not being invited. Does that, does the immunity that we give to our uh, politicians, like president and governors, extend to after your tenure? I, I don't understand. Why is he not also in the free? Why is he not right. being questioned? No, you see, the, the immunity is only when in office. After the office, uh, nobody has uh, such immunities, uh, literally, if you go by our constitution. So I think this issue is that <clears throat> they should investigate deeper. If the ministers indict him, then he has to answer. Mm -hmm. Because <clears throat> after all, one of the cardinal election uh, campaigning uh, listen with uh, the government is one of it is corruption uh, anti-corruption crusade you remember then the the issue of insecurity and others in the three major things that they have campaigned about so i think if at all the those who are being investigated uh, indicate him then he has uh, uh, the responsibility to come and uh, clear things because we cannot just hope that uh, uh, the ministers or uh, the CBN governor will eventually say that the president is in the, in, the, in the know, and then we leave it out. If we continue to do that one, I think you know, we should forget uh, our war with uh, corruption, because if we can extend that immunity to anybody and... Uh, we continue with a plea by getting thing. So I think we are not serious with uh, corruption. I mean, so, so I, to me, provided and if uh, he's uh, mentioned, uh, it, uh, then he has no uh, immunity and he, it is in his own interest and in the interest of the nation for him to come out and uh, you know, uh, clear himself. Well, we only hope that we can fight corruption and you know ensure that Nigeria is better for everyone. And if a musician, if the politician um, <laughs> decides to be corrupt, we hope that they also dance to the music. They face the consequences of their actions. I like the way you first of all call them musicians. Musician. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that's what they're doing. That's they're singing for us, us to dance. You know, they're entertaining us at the moment. <laughs> But yes, we just hope that Nigeria can be free from corruption um, in years to come. Or even now, we can start from 2024 since we have a new year, um, just a few days. But anyways, this is where we wrap it up on this segment. Thank you for joining us, Professor. Thank you for your valuable contribution. Thank you contribution. so much. Thank you. And Merry Christmas to you okay. once again. Same to you and uh, Happy New Year. Yes, Thank Happy you. New Year. Thank you. You too. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Well, We've been speaking to Professor Kamilu Sani Fage, and he's is one of the major professors right there at the um, Department of Political Science, Bayero University, Kano State. We're going to go on a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at a hot topic. Please stay with us.